Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Mon, April 22, 2024, The Young and the Restless airs today. Chance locks heads with Victor, Victoria accuses Nikki of drinking, and Devon makes a bid for dominance. Billy begs to go with Lily after he sees her as society. Not if you're going to talk about me firing Daniel and Heather, she threatens. Billy vows. When he calls Matty, he finds out that she has returned to school and is doing better. Charlie works in Los Angeles as a film producer. How are Johnny and Katie doing, Lily inquires. Billy claims they're doing well. Lily is sorry to hear about Chelsea's ordeal with Connor. Billy believes that playing kind with Adam is just one way to assist the boy get through this. Billy is amazed at how friendly they are. Lily adds that while she personally agrees, she doesn't even remotely trust him on a professional level. Billy teases her for breaking the rules by bringing up work, calling that unfair. Lily had no desire to discuss Daniel and Heather. She is discussing the wider picture, which is his suggestion that they co-manage the business. Lily notes that they have no common ground. That, in Billy's opinion, is the beauty of teamwork. Lily adds that she wouldn't betray her family in order to give him greater authority as another reason why she wouldn't do this. That's his plan, she's certain. I have to wonder, in your unrelenting quest for power, how long until you push me down? Billy assures her that he is not a stranger and that he wouldn't betray her in that way. Lily needs to be careful because she's been injured a lot. She forewarns that she will bring up his involvement during this afternoon's board meeting. She intends to request that they take away his officer status and curtail his authority. Nate and Devin discuss business at Chancellor Winters. As Abby enters, she is delighted to see how well they get along. She is solely responsible for the positive energy. As Nate gets up to go, Devin invites him to return in 30 minutes. Abby observes that the board meeting begins at the moment Nate leaves. Devin, what are you up to? she queries. Victoria and Nikki quarrel in the tack house over Victoria's intention to use herself as bait for Jordan. It's simply too dangerous. For Nikki, letting her live is what started this. Victoria tells her that Claire and she both had a hand in making that decision. Nikki yells that Harrison has now been abducted as a result of that. And most likely Claire too. Victoria scowls, saying, mostly. Are you implying that you continue to question Claire's innocence? Could Jordan have pulled this off on her own? Asks Nikki, who believes they have to take into account her involvement. Vicky claims that she previously completed it alone. She will not give up on her belief that her daughter has been abducted. She angrily accuses Nikki of becoming Claire's family. Nikki had no intention of making things worse. She is asked to keep her doubts to herself by Victoria. Nikki wants Claire's number in order to message Jordan. Victor, according to Victoria, is already working on a less hazardous project. Nikki claims that his scheme, which is meaningless to her and ineffective, is to grant her money and safe passage out of the nation. Nikki informs her daughter that her strategy might be their only chance of survival. On one condition, Victoria will give her Claire's phone number. When Nikki inquires about Victoria's health, her daughter has to move aside to answer a call. Nikki seizes the chance to snap a breath mint and take a gulp from her flask. Victoria reappears and informs us that Cole is en route. Nikki queries her health. Victoria claims that Cole and she must assist her in all of her plans. Maybe Nicholas as well. Nikki doesn't think Nick will keep Victor in the dark. Cole enters when Nikki and Victoria are fighting about Nick. Nothing new has come to his attention. He is informed by Victoria that Nikki intends to make her a target for Jordan. Cole objects, saying it's not true. Victoria says that she and Nicholas insisted on their assistance. No, Nicholas, yells Nikki. Victoria concedes that the strategy makes sense because Nikki is Jordan's weak point. Cole is not happy about this. Victor, Jack, and her all have plans, and nobody is letting the police know what they're up to. This could set Jordan off on a disastrous course of action. Victor comforts a sobbing Summer at the ranch, telling her they have a plan to get Harrison back home. 
Chance is thanked by Kyle for visiting. Chance informs them that every tip received is being investigated by the authorities. Summer worries that her son is in the company of two madmen. Victor gives her another embrace and swears to bring him home. Chance leaves to answer a phone call and then comes back to report that the delivery driver has been located. When he came back after stopping for coffee, the truck was gone. Security footage showed someone wearing a baseball cap and dressed entirely in black. According to the driver, the stop is a regular occurrence for him. After taking a call, Victor excuses himself. They now know that Claire wasn't the driver, as Kyle points out. That doesn't imply, some counters, that she wasn't the inside point person. She screams that their son has left after Kyle allowed her to enter the bedroom with him. Kyla finds it hard to accept Claire's involvement in this. Summer queries why, stating that she gave him her sob tail and batted her eyes at him. Kyle, she played you. She was aiming for you. Why would she go along with the aunt she's already turned her back on? Kyle questions. Why wasn't Claire's rite of passage demanded? In response, Summer says it's to make people like him believe she's innocent. Kyle queries what use that would be to her right now. Why would she choose to live a life of fugitivism over one of freedom and family? He's beginning to believe she's also a victim. Summer has no interest in Claire. I'm concerned for my son. Victor returns to the room, and Jack steps in to stop him. According to Jack, we just have to find them, and soon, the guilty parties will be apprehended and punished. Victor concurs with Jack's assessment of Claire's innocence as well as Kyle's. Her animosity toward Jordan is evident. Summer suggests that might be a ruse. Chance queries the specifics of the strategy. Victor desires to question the driver. Chance cautions that nothing he learns will be admissible in court. Victor is unconcerned with the court. He's not interested in Chance's counsel and will search for his great-grandson and granddaughter by whatever means necessary. You keep your distance from it. Billy tells Lily in society that it's brave of him to sever ties with the corporation at the knees. He's not attempting to take her position. Lily claims that it's a diversion and that not everyone sees it that way. You know it, and we're good together, Billy says to her. Jill first brought us together for this reason. They'll discuss it at the board meeting, Lily shrugs. The greatest choice is to have everything in the open. Billy notices that her back is covered as a result— he would never turn on her. Billy questions her belief that her family will defend her. Mamie's sole goal is to exact revenge on Jill, Devon, okay, so it's not just me that he finds difficult to collaborate with, he just considers himself. Devon will go crazy if her power becomes too great. Lily claims that although it won't occur, they would figure it out if it did. Billy is adamant that she should trust him and that he is the wise choice. I have no idea why in the world you fail to notice that. Victor won't be on this call, Nikki yells at Cole at the tack house. It cannot be disputed. Cole challenges Nikki, claiming that her husband will sideline her because she is too delicate. She can express what she can and cannot handle the best. She also believes this is all her fault, Victoria chimes in. Nikki is furious and vows to tell Victor as soon as she speaks with Jordan. This is what we're doing, she yells. Acquire it. I'm willing to take a chance on my life if it means saving Harrison and Claire. I've met your conditions, she asserts as she turns to face Victoria. Please provide Claire's phone number immediately. Victor orders Chance to board the vehicle or leave the ranch. Both Jack and Kyle concur. Calling his men, Victor urges them to bring the truck driver to the ranch and assures him that he will be paid. Chance leaves and Summer comes behind. Are we all ready for the meeting? Lily asks Devon and Abby at Chancellor Winters. Devon answers in the affirmative. Jill is going to join them virtually, and he also invited Nate to drop by. Devon greets Nate and expresses gratitude for his visit. Nate asserts that it is not his domain if this is about Daniel. On the screen, Jill shows up and corrects him. The board is involved. She is curious as to why Nate is there. Devon desires to have him back on the board. Taken aback, Lily queries whether Abby was aware of this. Abby acknowledges that they discussed it earlier. 
So, you two were the only ones who knew about this, Billy mused. Interestingly, Devon is asked by Jill how long this has been brewing in his tiny brain. According to Devon, the matter relates back to Neil, who specified in his will that Nate would take the seat. He thinks he deserves it. Especially Loli, but then again, it was probably your idea all along, says Billy, who thinks it's sketchy to drop this on them all. He proposes giving them a vote. Summer apologizes to Chance about her grandfather outside the ranch. Chance believes he ought to have brought up the number of times his schemes have fallen through. Summer contends that he has accomplished some goals that the cops haven't. Yes, unlawful activities, Chance scowls, things that are dangerous. This is but one of the reasons he departed from the police. Summer claims that Victor doesn't allow anyone stand in his way as he solves problems and sees them through. It sounds like she agrees with him, Chance replies. Jordan is lost to the cops, according to Summer. She truly doesn't care how it happens. All she wants is to bring her son home. Chance maintains that letting the police handle Harrison's return is the wisest course of action. That's what Dominic would do if it were him. Summer claims it's not Dom, so he's not really sure what he would do. Chance gives up the point. He assures her that their goals are same before departing to follow up with the chief investigator. Nikki yells, Give me the down phone number, Victoria, from the tack house. We are squandering time. Victoria queries, How are you doing? You appear extremely nervous and on the verge of shaking. Nikki screams that interacting with Jordan would make anyone upset. Why are you making things so hard for me to do? You're always putting up a fight with me. Why do you act in such way? Mom, Victoria ogles. Have you resumed drinking? No, yells Nikki. I haven't had any alcohol. Victoria is asking out of love since she has witnessed the conduct previously. I apologize. Nikki says it's a delicate subject. As she gives her daughter a hug, she pretends that she hasn't been drinking. The truck driver is informed at the ranch that a seven-year-old boy was abducted using his car. The man maintains that while he was buying coffee, his truck was stolen. Security footage confirmed what he said. Why would I tell a lie? According to Jack, they never said he lied. When Victor shows there, Jack threatens to make Victor Newman's life a living hell if he believes he knows more than he is revealing. Jack starts. So... When we ask for answers, Victor says, you better respond. Dave is offered $100,000 I Victor in exchange for insider knowledge. You don't think I'm involved, do you? Asks a shocked Dave. Yes, yells Kyle. Yes, we do. Jack informs him that the woman he has been conducting business with is an almost unstoppable murderer. You are extremely fortunate to have survived. Victor informs him that this is his opportunity to make amends and preserve the life of a child. So why don't you share all of your knowledge with us? Billy asks Devon at Chancellor Winters if Jill agreed to put Abby on the board if he also got a seat, so is this little dance to put Nate on the board payback. Devon adds that because Nate has earned it back, it's about what Neil wants. Right, Billy grunts. Thus, mine is a freebie while Nate has earned his, with a shrug, Devon says, you said that. He's eager to get the voting started. That's one vote for me to have Nate on the board, Devon declares. That is seconded by Abby. Surprise, surprise, exclaims Billy. Devon looks up at Lily. Billy questions the true purpose of the board and accuses Devon of stacking the board to support him. Since the result is already known, what good is voting? Devon asks to continue, or if he's finished. Does this mean we get to vote now? Queries Jill. Nate, this is not personal at all. You've done a great job since coming back, Billy replies. However, I think it's a little too soon. The last time's events are still too recent in my memory. Yes, from when you brazenly sold us out, Jill agrees. I think it's too soon, so I vote no. Devon looks at Lily, the person who breaks ties. I guess it's up to me then, she remarks. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.